Okay, I'm sure people will come in um, and filter in as they transition through um, to other webinars, but thanks everyone for being here. I'm Lauren and uh, this is my friend Michaela, uh, a friend of the Student um, Television Network and here to talk about, um, you know, directing and taking your ideas from your head and onto production. Um, and so let me just tell you a little bit about Michaela. She is an actress, screenwriter, director uh, with over 10 years of experience, best known for her role on Caitlin, um, as Caitlin on Disney's Lab Rats, and currently is streaming on Disney Plus. Michaela is a screenwriter, director um, for Rock Wayne Studios, and recently is returning from writing and directing her own television pilot. So, so cool. I know Kayla from a past course and she's from start to finish, you know, she's got it broken down. So really excited to listen to her and uh, Michaela, take it away. Awesome. Well, hello everybody. I'm really excited to be here. I. Uh, cannot wait to share my knowledge with you guys. It's a huge passion of mine to help up and coming screenwriters and filmmakers uh, really learn how to work in the industry. And it's a huge passion of mine to teach people how to have success without regret. So um, you're probably going to hear me say that a lot or talk about um, that during the session, uh, directing from thought to screen. Uh, and so I, it, I think it's a, a really important thing in the industry to learn how to maneuver uh, and have success without um, the regret, in a sense, like without compromising on staying true to yourself. Uh, so we have a lot to cover in a very short amount of time. I'm just going to set my clock here and watch that. Um, but we are going to basically, uh, like Lauren said, we're going to be talking about essentially from thought to screen. So we're gonna go from pre-production to production to post-production. And you're gonna learn from me who actually has firsthand experience as a filmmaker, as a director working um, through these different stages of production. So uh, I would suggest having a notebook and a pen or something to write this down. I, this is recorded, so you'll be able to watch it back, but we're gonna go through a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So this is gonna be a crash course. Uh, for you guys. Uh, so essentially, we're going to start with uh, directing. What is directing? What is filmmaking? Uh, directing and filmmaking essentially is you're going to be taking the screenwriter's vision or the script, and you're going to be translating it into your own vision, and you're going to be directing a film or a TV show or a commercial or whatever it may be. You're essentially in charge. You're the leader. You're the one who's coordinating uh, with the crew and the cinematographer and then the actors and all that fun and good stuff that I'm sure all you guys are really excited to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with some of the um, basics that you need to know. And always the first thing I, that I do when as a coach as well when I'm teaching my students is I want you guys to actually write this down. So um, I want you guys to think about your three W's. OK, so three W's. The first one is who are you? I think it's so important to know who you are um, as a person in the industry, who you are as a director, or essentially kind of what director you want to be. Uh, you need to have that foundation before you actually start your directing. So it's a loaded question, but who are you? The third one is, uh, why are you passionate? So why are you doing something if you're not passionate about it? That's what I always say. So your passion is going to drive your creativity and it's going to bring a lot of good things into the production. So why are you passionate? And the last W is what legacy do you want to leave behind? And this is extremely important as a director because you want to think about, okay, what kind of content do I want to put out into the industry? What do I want to be remembered for? What do I want my family to see, my friends to see? And um, just remember, Remember that uh, once it's on the internet, it's there forever. So just uh, remember that, think about that. Um, and like, also what legacy do you wanna leave behind for your cast, for your crew, for all the people working on your production? Who do you want, like essentially what legacy do you wanna be uh, leave behind and who do you wanna be remembered as a director? So again, who are you? Why are you passionate? And what legacy do you wanna leave behind? So just contemplate that and think about that. 
So essentially as a director, you are in charge. You set the tone for the set from the get-go. You'll be setting the tone for the set. People will look up to you for leadership and for decisions. And so you're going to be what I call doing a juggling act. You're going to be juggling a lot of things. So uh, I suggest learning how to be good with multitasking. Hopefully you are already, but multitasking is an essential thing as a director because you're going to be pulled in all different directions. Um, so, okay, let's get into uh, pre-production. So pre-production, essentially, let's say, okay, you got your first job as a director, you're hired by a production company, and now it's time for you to start the process. So what essentially is gonna happen is once you sign that deal and you become the director for the project, let's say it's like a, a TV show, you're working on a TV show. Well, the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna get the script. Now the script is actually going to be given to you by the screenwriter who wrote it for the show, um, or the production company will give it to you. And then what you're gonna be able to do is look at it and you gotta know it. You gotta know that script like the back of your hand. You have to know every single little detail of that script. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna read through it as many times as you can. Now, granted, if, for example, if you're doing a TV show, you're gonna have rewrites a lot, pretty much all the time. Uh, as a film, you're gonna have rewrites occasionally here and there as well. So uh, just uh, remember that and just, keep up to date on the script. And essentially you're gonna be a huge part of those rewrites because you're probably gonna be requesting it as a director. All right, so now let's talk about taking the screenwriter's vision and making it your own. So the screenwriter has a particular vision when they are writing the script. And myself as a screenwriter and a director, I kind of can see both aspects. Um, both sides of the coin, essentially. Uh, so as a screenwriter, they're going to be coming in with this very clear vision of what they want for the script and how they write the film or the TV show. So you as a director, it's your job to actually take what they wrote and get it onto the screen and actually get it made. So you are a storyteller. So as a storyteller, you need to actually be able to put your own vision and also take the screenwriter's vision and essentially mesh it together to make this beautiful, um, harmonious production. Uh, so essentially, you have to be able to take something like, okay, let's say the screenwriter has, the screenwriter has very limited um, space to write. So for example, it's like, okay, the boy ran across the street to get the ball and a car was coming. So you don't have all the details, but you as a director have to be creative. Okay, what kind of ball is the boy holding? How old is the boy? Or like what kind of car is coming at him? It's very different if like a small little car is like coming at him, but then there's a big semi truck coming at him, right? They're gonna have two, it's gonna be different. It's gonna make the feel of the shot very different. So it's your job as a director to actually read between the lines um, of the screenwriter's work and make it your own. Essentially, that is the basics of taking uh, the screenwriter's vision and making it your own. Okay, so now we're, um, again, I know I'm moving really fast here, guys, but I got a lot to cover. So now we're gonna be talking about storyboarding. Storyboarding is essentially, let's say that, okay, you've read the script, now it's time to storyboard. So you're gonna storyboard certain scenes, maybe you're going to storyboard the whole whole film. And if you haven't heard of storyboarding, storyboarding is essentially you're going to be drawing out shot by shot. So let's say you take a scene, you're going to draw out like, okay, I'm not a drawer, I'm not an artist, but I did storyboarding um, for my productions. And so I actually would draw little stick figures. And essentially what the storyboards are for is to give you peace of mind as a director, like, okay, I know exactly what it's gonna look like. And you can also give it to the cinematographer and you can show them this is the kind of shot that I want. This is what I want it to look like. I very highly suggest storyboarding your most complicated scenes so that when you get on set, you're not wasting a lot of time because time is very precious. All right, and we're gonna talk about location scouting. Location scouting is essentially when you're going out and you're trying to find locations uh, to film your TV show or your film. So you're gonna to wanna to go out and try to find the uh, best spots uh, for you. Now there's a lot to it. There's a lot about permitting and you have to get permission. You have to see if, is it a public space? Is it a private space? You know, there's all that stuff, which I'm not really gonna get into, but uh, you, you, there's a lot of legal stuff to that, but you wanna go out, you wanna find these locations that really speak to you as a director. So you're gonna go out and you're actually gonna location scout before you even film, which is actually really fun to do. It's one of my favorite things uh, to do in pre-production. Okay, then once you're done like getting your locations, uh, the next thing that you're actually gonna do is 
uh, you're going to be getting the cast together and you're going to be getting the crew together. So that means that you're going to be getting the hair and makeup. You're going to be getting people to do wardrobe. You're going to be getting people to um, do the sound and the lighting and the cinematography and all of these wonderful things uh, that are going to be involved in the production. You're also going to be involved in casting. So you're going to be, in, you might hire a casting director to do it. And a casting director is essentially somebody who goes and has an audition, holds an audition and actors will come in and they audition for the casting director. And usually a, a film or a tape is sent back to you as the director to review it. And then you kind of pick who you want to come to a callback. And that's essentially a second audition. Sometimes as a director, if you're doing a smaller production, you might actually be doing the casting yourself. And so uh, I have been involved in casting and I absolutely love the process. I love to be involved in casting. And it just gives you a lot more uh, say as a director when you're actually involved in the casting yourself of who actually are your actors. Uh, so you get to pick your actors, which is really neat. So once you got your whole crew together and you got, um, you cast your actors, then it's then you're ready to actually get ready for production. So that means call sheets. Now I'm going to tell you this, guys. Call sheets. I have this love hate relationship with call sheets because call sheets are one of those things that are really tedious, but you can't avoid it as a director. So a call sheet is essentially a piece of paper that has the location of the filming, the date and the time, and it shows like the let's say for example the actor. So the act this particular actor needs to be there at. 7 a.m. Okay, 7 a.m. They need to be in hair and makeup by 7 and they need to be on the set by 8 a.m. All of those things are going to be written on your call sheet. You're going to have addresses, locations, phone numbers, and everything. If you, and then also, let's say it's for the crew. Well, the crew is going to probably arrive at 6 a.m. So you got to have to make a call sheet for the particular crew members. 6 a.m. Crew gets there, actors get there at 7, and you'd have separate call sheets for every department and every actor. So essentially you're just making a ton of call sheets and these call sheets change all the time because your schedule changes quite a bit. Uh, so you really have to be flexible as a director. Uh, and it's one of those things that you can actually hire somebody to do, uh, which I'd recommend, but you're still gonna be involved regardless. Essentially you're making the schedule for every day of production. Now there are resources that are online for this. Uh, this would be uh, one of the ones is simplecallsheet.com simplecallsheet.com is one. Uh, honestly, you can just Google templates online and it's, it's really easy. So that's one, simplecallsheet.com. And then also another one that I love is Studio Binder. Studio Binder is something that you can actually sign up for and then you can create your call sheets and actually email straight from the software. So Studio Binder is very good for call sheets. Okay, now uh, we've basically talked about pre-production, let's go into production. So now you have everything ready to go and you're ready to start filming. So production is essentially where you're on the set, you're with the cinematographer, you're with the crew, your actors are all there, you are ready to go. Um, you've sent out your call sheets, everybody knows when to be there and you are organized and ready to go. Make sure you're also tip, this is a side tip, keep like in contact with everybody. Um, if you have people working for you, delegate as much as you can as a director because you will be doing so much work. Uh, so, cause I, I've worked on sets where it was a skeleton crew, which means it was very few people and I was doing a lot of people's jobs. Great learning experience, but it's, it's a lot. So if you can delegate, do that. Okay, we're gonna talk about uh, the first thing with production is showing leadership and setting the tone and first impressions. So essentially one of the first things that you're gonna do as a director once you're on set is you're gonna have a table read. And what a table read is, is where you sit around a table and you actually get to read the script with all of the actors. And uh, some of not, like usually the crew is not quite there yet. They come on there, you're basically in a sense having rehearsal time. Uh, with TV, you usually film one episode in a week if it's like a half hour television show. Uh, and so you have a few days of rehearsal and like three days of rehearsal, two days of filming. On a film, it's a little different. You have like months of filming. Uh, so TV is really fast paced. Uh, so just, just bear in mind that. 
Now, when you do a table read, uh, you'll do this for a film too. So you sit around the table, all the actors are reading their parts and you're essentially leading it and introducing everybody. So you will be setting the tone. So if you come to set and let's say you've had a horrible, horrible morning and things are going so wrong and pre-production was a mess and you cut, but you finally get it together at the last minute at like midnight the night before, you're exhausted and you come into this table read. If you come in with like a horrible attitude, like, oh, I'm so mad, this is horrible you have set the tone for the entire set. So you want to be able to bear in mind that once you get onto the set, you want to be happy, you want to be excited, you want to be encouraging. You basically are cheerleading everybody on like, this is a production, we're going to have so much fun, it's going to be great. We're going to make a really great project together. And remember, it takes a lot of hands to make something happen. So everybody is important on the set. So make sure that you treat everybody accordingly. Every single person is vital to that production. Uh, so just uh, bear in mind, first impressions, very important. Now, also, you want to prepare to shoot like the night before uh, you actually film. So just make sure that you have everything like written out, like what you need to do, all your director's notes. I suggest keeping a binder. It's called a production binder. And essentially, you have this binder. You'll walk around with it everywhere you go. It'll have the call sheets in it. It'll have all of the shooting locations in it. It'll have like the schedules. It'll have important documents that you need. So make a binder for yourself, carry it with you everywhere. Um, and so essentially you'll prepare the night before and then you'll just kind of get ready to go the next day, make sure everything is in place. Again, you gotta have good organizational skills. Um, I wish I could go into more details on this. Uh, we just simply don't have time. So I am going to uh, move on. So uh, make sure that when you're working with the actors, let's actually talk about that. So now you're on set, the actors are in front of you and you're filming, woo, okay. So the cinematographer's at first there, everything's um, ready to go and you have your actors in front of the camera. Working with the actors is extremely important. A few things to watch out for is watch for actors that are just having a hard day. <laughs> or let's say that you're you have actors that you, you've done a few takes and it's great, but then you get to nine, 10 takes, 11 takes of the same scene, there's something wrong with your actor, okay? Just a pro tip, pull, stop the production for a second, pull your actor aside, see what's going on. Essentially, you're going to be uh, pep talking your actors all the time. And uh, another tip too is with actors, this is, it can happen. So actors, will start the production and it's not everybody okay but just look out for this some actors will start the production they're halfway the, uh, through the production and then they realize wow i'm really important to the show they need me then they start being a drama queen so watch out for that and nip it in the butt right away so you're in charge you got sometimes as a director you got to be stern Sometimes you gotta be stern with your actors, with your cinematographers. You wanna be careful. Let's say that you see an actor doing something dangerous, stop them. You wanna protect your actors because I mean, obviously you probably will have things in place where they sign a waiver of liability. You can always do that. If something happens to the actor, you don't get sued. But um, again, I, you guys are young. So this is something that you're gonna be learning as you get older and you actually start working in um, production. Uh, so I'm, I'm really giving you like the professional side of things. So uh, just bear that in mind, watch your actors, work with your actors. You are essentially an acting coach as well. So really work with them to bring out what you want uh, in the scene. Let's say that the actor has a very emotional scene, work with them to bring that out. Sometimes it helps to have them relate to something in their real life so that it becomes more of a realistic performance. So learn how to become an acting coach as well for these actors. Also, working with the crew is important. You want to make sure that as a director, you are just, you're coming in, you're happy, no matter what happened the day before, you're very happy, you come in and you're just like, okay, let's go, let's, let's work together, we're a team, and remind everybody, what, the, what is the purpose of this production? Like, let's say we, we want to put something great out into the world. Just keep reminding them of that, because there's going to be hard days, there's going to be stressful days, there's going to be things like that as a director, and you just need to be the one that, you know, isn't as a leader uh, is encouraging people and not really putting people down like, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. Essentially find a way to encourage people in the right direction. That's the best way I would say it. People don't wanna be insulted, but if you can encourage people in the right direction, that's the way to go. 
All right, now also working with the uh, cinematographer. So you're gonna be working with the cinematographer on not only with the actors, but as with the cinematographer with the angles. So think camera angles. There's a few um, angles that are the main ones that I would focus on. So you might wanna write this down. Uh, establishing shot. Now an establishing shot is a shot that is like the establishing shot is like essentially what it is. It's usually a wide angle shot where it shows like the whole scene of what's what you're filming in front of you. And why that's important is when you're editing, you, if something happens where like, oh, this, this, there's continuity problems, which we're going to get into what continuity is in just a minute. But if there's like a problem where it's like this, the shots don't match up, you can always cut back to the establishing shot. So make sure you have that very important. Now, a medium shot is kind of like this. I'm, I mean, like part of me right here is like medium shot. Um, it's just like a little bit closer on the actor. Um, it's always good to have that. So when all your takes, you need to be doing an establishing shot and a medium shot. Always, always, always do that. It's for editing purposes. Um, and then you have a close-up shot. So it's going to be like super close. You can actually do a super close-up where it's like just their eyes or just uh, right here. Um, but that would be a close-up shot because you're going to be using this in editing. You want to try to find the balance between like, don't do a hundred million shots, but also get enough footage so that you're not missing footage when you go into editing. So you want to uh, think about all of those things. So again, establishing shot, medium shot, close-up shot. Those are the main ones. There's a lot of others, tons of others, um, but I'll, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, okay, now let's talk about crossing the line of action. So the line of action is essentially uh, you have two people, one on each side. Let's say you have two actors on each side. So your camera is right here in be like shooting in between the actors, for example, or shooting let's or maybe even shooting one of the actors this way. So crossing the line of action means you're bringing the camera over the line. So think of it this way, person, person, cameras back here, you basically have a half circle that's not crossing the line of action when you're filming, okay? If you are moving the camera outside that line, you actually have to have a cut to shot. So you'd have to have something like you cut to something else so that you can cross the line of action. We're gonna talk about that a little bit more in editing portion, which is the uh, post-production, which we're about to get into. Um, but it's really important to know that. So um, when you're doing production, again, this is just very simple stuff. I'm actually gonna give you a recommendation on a book, which will teach you all this. Um, Actually, I'll just tell you, tell you that right now. So the book I recommend, I can't get into all the shots because there's like the pan shot and then there's the crane shot and the tracking shot, the over the shoulder shot. There's so many different shots. So I recommend a book. Um, it's called Shot by Shot by Stephen D. Katz. Again, Shot by Shot by Stephen D. Katz. It is essential if you're going to be a director. It's about a 400 page book, which I know can be kind of intimidating, but I highly highly recommend this shot by shot by Stephen D. Katz. Read it before you do any like filming <laughs> at all as a director, uh, because it's going to teach you all of these shots and everything you really need to know from pre-production into editing. So it's more than I can teach you here. Um, I'm giving you the basic overview. All right. So also quick thing with being a director, just a side note, being flexible flexible is really important. Staying calm under pressure as well, because you're going to have actors and crew members and all this stuff. Can I talk to you? I need to talk to you. I need to talk to you. And sometimes you have to be like, okay, I can get to you in 10 minutes, but I'm doing this over here. So you need to be able to balance that as a director. Um, and then also another great thing too, is a tip back to call sheets, leave yourself, um, days in between they're called flex days. So this is going to help you with staying sane as a director and being flexible. Um, when you're making your schedule, you're going to do what's called flex days. So it's going to be a date. Let's say you film on Monday and then you film on Tuesday and then you have a flex day on Wednesday and then you film Thursday. A flex day is essentially a day where you do nothing. Okay. You have a day where you do nothing and you just prepare for the upcoming production. But what's also great about these flex days is they can be used to switch the schedule around. So let's say Tuesday, you have an outside shot and it's gonna rain, switch it to Wednesday and then take Tuesday as the flex day. 
it's wonderful. I'm telling you as a director, I, if you can put the more flex days you put in, if you have the luxury of doing that, do it. Oh my goodness. It's the best thing because, um, I had, when I was, I had a, the pilot I was filming was in Alabama and it was also the rainiest season of the year. And we were filming all of our shots outside. A lot of them, we had a studio, but we were filming a lot outside and uh, those flex days came in very handy. Also, you want to take time for yourself as a director. I think that's extremely important. Take time for yourself. <laughs> it's so hard to do because I, I would be working till like 12, one in the morning and then get up. No, it was, it was eventually I got burnt out, you know, after weeks of production. So from my experience, take time for yourself, set time aside where you're doing nothing, just relaxing. Okay, now let's get into post-production. This is gonna be the final uh, section for today. And then we're gonna do a Q and A in about uh, five minutes or so. Okay, so post-production. What is post-production? Post-production is essentially you're, you're done with pre-production, you're done filming, everything's done. You've gotten all the footage that you need and now it is time for editing. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about working with the editor and why editing is so important. So work, you're going to hire an editor. You may do it yourself. Who knows? Like if you're doing a student film, you're probably going to be using iMovie um, is a great one to use. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, the softwares. But let's say that you're in a bigger production and uh, 10 minutes to Q&A. Oh, perfect. OK, so I got 10 minutes. I got more time. Great. Um, OK, working with the editor, what does that look like? OK, so working with the editor, once you get into editing, and you're actually working with this person, you're going to be essentially, again, telling a story. So you have to be able to take everything that you filmed and then actually make it ready for the screen. And so this is gonna be taking all of your different shots and different angles or different performances from the actor and putting it all together into one full production um, and finished product. Now, editing is extremely important because no matter how good your pre-production is, no matter how great you do in production, no matter how organized you are, if your editing is not good, it's kind of for not because that's the final product. So editing is one of the most important things in production because it, it ultimately is what's going to end up out in the world and out on the screen. And so things, some tips that I have for you with this, uh, we're going to go through a couple of things. One is continuity. So I mentioned that I was going to talk about this. Continuity is essentially the shots need to match up. So let's say that you got an actor on the set and you got like a little, a little cup on the set behind them, okay? So the actor does their acting and that cup is right in place behind them. Then all of a sudden the actor decides to move the cup somewhere because they're just kind of playing with it or whatever. And then you do another shot and all of a sudden like that cup jumps from here to here when you're editing that is not continuity so that is something it doesn't match up the shots don't match up and i'm telling you it can kill your editing so when you're on the set watch for that you can actually tell your actors hot set hot set what that means is that the set is hot don't touch anything because um you have to have things in a certain place so the continuity matches up again this goes back to an establishing shot so if your continuity doesn't match up, you can always cut to an establishing shot and then go back to one that does match up. This is why you have so much footage so that you have lots to choose from because it's terrible when you're in uh, editing and it'll happen in some areas, it's inevitable, but when you're like, oh man, that actor gave a great performance, but the continuity doesn't match up. So you have to take the lesser performance because of the continuity. Or if the continuity is small enough, maybe you can get away with it. You'll probably notice this if you watch films or TV that something's out of place. It's because of that. So just watch for that on set and in editing. Also working with the editor, extremely important. They need to be really good with sound engineering. Okay, you need to get someone who's really good with sound engineering. I know this from firsthand experience, sound can kill your production. So if people will usually forgive visuals like the audience, but they will not forgive sound. So if your sound is off and it doesn't sound good or it sounds grainy, it's gonna be extremely distracting and you can't even watch the story. So uh, make sure that your sound is really good. 
um, again, speaking of story, your job is to tell the story. So tell the story, keep it going. Essentially, you're trying to get from beginning to end and make it as exciting and great as possible and hook that audience right in the beginning. You want to hook the audience right at the beginning with great shots and great footage um, and a great story. So just keep it going. Um, now, there's different um, things that you can do uh, that actually make it look really good as an editor. So I would suggest doing um, an establishing shot to a medium shot to a close up shot. So if you're going to be like getting in, like it, it, so instead of doing like an establishing shot and then all of a sudden you cut to a close up, I recommend probably not doing that unless it's for a specific reason. So for example, if it's like, oh, it's intimidating and scary, then maybe you do cut right to a close up. Again, there's no really wrong way to do it. It's just, that's kind of my recommendation is kind of build it up. But hey, look, you as a filmmaker, you have the creative um, way to do it. So, you know, maybe you're gonna do something that isn't normally done and isn't normally seen. The editor also really quickly too, will be fixing the lighting, the sound, the colorization, they'll add effects. So if you have a good editor, that's great. Uh, also, I'm also gonna talk about the softwares now. So softwares to use, I the best software is Final Cut Pro X. Now this is kind of expensive. So if you, when you get in, like when you're building more and doing more things like Final Cut Pro X is really, really great. That's gonna run several hundred dollars for that. But once you have it, you have it for life. And it is the best uh, editing software. Now, if you um, are newer and you're making like a student film, iMovie is always wonderful. So if you have, I actually use it quite a bit. So if you have a um, Apple computer, you can use iMovie. And there's tons of tutorials on YouTube. So if you go on YouTube and you just type in iMovie tutorials, it'll come up. You get a lot of stuff from there. All right, really quick, I got a few minutes here, uh, about five minutes left. So I'm actually going to now talk to you guys about getting your package together. So we have gone from the beginning concept to pre-production to production to post-production. So now your product is done. You have a completed project. Woo, that's exciting. Now it's time to pitch. So let's say, well, unless, unless you're working with a network, you don't have to pitch, but let's say that you make a project on your own and you wanna pitch it to a network, here's how to do it. So your pitch package is really important. It's called a pitch package. And basically what it is, is you're gonna be getting your uh, DVD covers, you're gonna be getting DVD holders, you're gonna be burning your DVDs um, as well. So you're actually gonna make a little DVD of your project. You can actually even get the script together. You can also get um, like the script together. You can get the, uh, what's the other thing? Okay, so you can actually have a poster made. You can have a poster made that like kind of looks like your movie. If you have like a graphic designer do that, that's really great too. Um, you can have like your character descriptions together. You can have like all kind of like all your papers together. Like here's the script, here's the character descriptions. Here's the summary of the show. Here's the actual show on a DVD. And here's a poster of what it would look like. And then what you actually get to do is you get to, um, go to these different networks and pitch the show. show. Essentially, you're, so you're going in there, you're passionate about it, here's the show, here's what it's about. So if you ever get an opportunity to do that, it's great, go in, have fun, uh, be passionate about what you're doing and explain to them what your show is and essentially why they would want it. Um, you can also get sponsors too. Sponsors are pretty cool where actually you get people to sponsor your show. So for example, if you have like Heinz ketchup in your show, they would pay you money to put Heinz ketchup in your show. That's like a big production area. But if you see that, you see Coca-Cola or Heinz ketchup or something like that actually on um, these movies, it's because they paid money to do that. So there's all that too. Um, now, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about, I know we went through so much, you're probably gonna have to watch this back again, but um, what can you do right now? So what is wonderful is we have these things called smartphones now that it's like, you can just film amazing things on your smartphone right now. You can do it with your friends. You can write your own scripts. You can, um, it's Studio Binder, great for writing scripts too, just a side note. Studio Binder is great for that and call sheets. Um, but you can write your scripts and then you can film your own stuff on your smartphone and it's great. So you can do that right now. And then as you actually get older um, into like a working age too, you can be um, an AD, which would be an assistant director. You could be a runner on a um, 
production set, which basically gets you onto the set as an assistant, like, oh, this person needs coffee, this person needs that, but it gets you onto the set. Um, and that's actually a really, really wonderful way to network is actually getting you onto that set. So those are some of the things that you can think about and do now. And if you're not like working with a network right now, it doesn't matter. You can do it yourself. We just have it right at our fingertips with our smartphone. So don't stop doing that. Keep doing that. And then also final thing, as a director, stay true to yourself. The industry, there's a lot of pressure in the industry. There's to be something that you're not. And so don't do something unless you're comfortable with it and you're passionate about it. And it is okay to say no, okay? Very important. You should stay true to yourself, your morals, your beliefs, whatever it may be. Don't compromise on that just to have success. Um, again, this goes back to success without regret. Okay, so I have like one minute left. I'm gonna tell you really quick. Um, Lauren's actually gonna link into the chat. I have um, free tips for actors, screenwriters and directors on my Facebook page. That is the Actors Advantage online courses. She'll link that into the chat. If you like and follow that page every week, I'm giving away free tips. So you can uh, take a look at that. And then also you can add yourself to the email list um, as well. She'll link that there too. That will give you all the info. Um, on I teach courses and stuff. So you can take a look at that or you can get those free tips sent to you. I also occasionally give free training. So stay tuned for that. But okay, it was wonderful working with you. Let's get into the um, Q&A. Let's see. Amazing. Thank you, Michaela. Yeah, let's everybody give her a virtual round of applause. Um, so yes, I will definitely put the links in the chat for Kayla's uh, materials that she offers on online. And um, like you said, like she said, she does do those free trainings. So um, definitely sign up for her mailing list. I'm on it um, so that you can get her info when she comes out. So I'd love to hear people's, uh, the students, your questions. Um, you could type them in the chat box and I can read them uh, to Michaela, or there's a Q&A um, box at the bottom of the Zoom screen as well, too. Or you can raise your hand. I believe I'll see that and I can unmute you and uh, we won't see your picture, but we'll hear your question live. So um, yeah, let's load those in. We have about 10 minutes to answer those questions. Awesome. Yeah, that was a lot of information in a short amount of time. So hopefully you guys were able to get the most out of it. <laughs> it was very quick. <laughs> Okay, I have one question here, Michaela. I have, how do you deal with difficult talent on set? I know you <laughs> briefly yeah. said that a little bit in your presentation. Yeah, that is, that is such a good question. It's, oh my goodness, it's a balancing act because obviously you don't want to rock the boat so hard that it's like everyone's upset on set. But you also want to be stern. So how I deal with difficult talent, usually the actors have something going on that's like bigger than what they're telling me. So usually it's something to do with their personal life or um, just just having a bad day, whatever it may be. So you just you need to pull them aside. You need to like stop production for a few minutes, pull them aside find out what's going on and try to relate to them. Now, if they're still being difficult, I mean, that's when you really have to be stern and, and tell, like you need to remind them who is in charge because essentially you are in charge. And that's kind of where you're gonna take your director's badge and be like, nope, like you need to, you need to listen. You know, you kind of need to shut down their ego and then um, keep them going and just remind them, look, we're all a team here and you need to be a team player. So sometimes you can be sweet, sometimes you gotta be stern. Amazing, amazing. And we have another question from Tosh. Tosh, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you now. So how do you how do you make connections in the industry? Now you kind of have to get your foot in the door. So how would you like, do you go to film festivals or how do you kind of make meet all these people and kind of just like get your foot out there and become more known? Yeah, so, well, you're already doing the first step just by being part of this group. So essentially, you, yes, film festivals are good, student film festivals, all of that stuff is really good. Essentially, you need to build your network. So you can actually follow people on Facebook. You can join other Facebook groups. And a lot of Facebook groups are actually offering like job opportunities and um, like actual like competitions where you can submit your own films. A lot of stuff is done through social media right now. Things looking online, just looking for competitions to enter in. Essentially build your portfolio. And a lot of the industry is about who you know. 
So like you're going to meet one person and they're going to know somebody else. And then that person might introduce you to somebody else. So essentially your network is being built and it can be hard to first start out getting that foot in the door, but I would just encourage you to do as many competitions as you can get your work out there, get on a set. Like if you really want to be a filmmaker, try to get on a set. And even if you're just an, as, an, as an assistant, think about this. You're with all these people that are working with this great network or whoever you're with, you're building connections just being on the set. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. Amazing. Thanks, Tosh. I have another question from Juliana. Okay. How did you get into acting and directing? Okay, that's a good question. So a lot of people ask me, how did you start working for Disney Channel? That's one of the main questions that I get. And there's no magic way. I really, I worked pretty hard uh, and I happened to be in the right place at the right time. So how it worked is I actually got an agent and a manager and they started sending me out on auditions. The first company I actually worked for was Nickelodeon. So that was the first company I worked for. But then I moved on to work uh, for other companies and eventually I just auditioned for Disney and I got it. As far as the screenwriting goes and the directing goes, uh, I have been doing that since I was 11 years old. And I would do it on a small scale with theater. That's where I started. And then I was recognized by a producer and he liked, he recognized my talent and he liked what I did. And so he decided to actually mentor me for a year in production and screenwriting and directing. And then um, years later, um, I wound up just knowing the right people. And they asked me like, hey, do you have a script? We know your work, do you have a script? And I was like, yeah, I do. So this is why you have to have like a, a portfolio. I had a script, I sent it in and they also knew I was a director. And so they were like, okay, we actually pick your script. We love it. Can you also direct it? And that was kind of my first step into it. So again, it's who you know. Amazing, yeah, it's fascinating. Everybody's path is usually a little bit different. Mm -hmm. um, and I have another question here, Michaela from Ted. Ted asks if you can explain that crossing the line of action again. Yeah. Um, okay. That was a really key point I thought as well. Yeah. So again, when you get the book, um, shot by shot, it's going to explain that in great detail. And it's actually going to show you pictures. <laughs> so that'll be much better than what I'm doing. But essentially you have one actor here. You have one actor here. And let's say that your camera is right. Okay, my face is the camera, right? And so like, let's say you're angled at this person right here. Your line of action, imagine a line between this actor and this actor. Anything that's on the opposite side of that line is crossing the line of action. So you have this area right here. It's like a little half circle. You can move your camera all you want within that space. But as soon as you move it outside that space, you're crossing the line of action and you need to do a cut shot, something else that like grabs, like this is an editing thing, the editor can help you with this. But essentially, if you're crossing the line of action, make sure that you have other like cut two shots. Maybe there's like a dog on the floor and you like film the dog and you cut to the dog and then all of a sudden you're on the other side of the actors, if that makes sense. Perfect sense, perfect sense. Thank you for explaining that. Uh, we have about a couple more questions here. Um, I'm curious, actually, Michaela, is it possible in the process of when you're on set to overshoot, like to shoot too much? Yes, <laughs> yes. I can tell you from firsthand experience, when you are sitting there as a director going through thousands of hours of footage, it's too much. It's too much. Like you, you don't want to do that. Then again, you don't want to have not enough to where it's like, oh, I don't have enough footage to make the film, right? So it's, I would say it's better to err on the side of too much than too little. But yeah, I guess as a director, you're going to find that balancing act. I, as a rule of thumb, I wouldn't do more than maybe five takes per scene, like per shot, per shot. So let's say there's like a scene and it has um, 10 different shots in it. I wouldn't do like five, more than like five per shot um, because like, and they're takes. So like doing it over and over again, because it's just, it's too much at that point. You know, when you're doing nine or 10 takes and you know, sometimes you have the liberty, you have the money and you have the time to do it. Um, but when you're in editing, it's a headache. So find the balance. Totally balance, absolutely. 
Um, I guess this will be our last question here. Michaela, thank you so much for your knowledge and your time today. It's really, really amazing, especially talking about the different stages, you know, all three and breaking those down for us. Um, we have the last question here from Sherry. How do you prioritize your day when there is so much to do? Okay, yeah, this goes back to taking time for yourself. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a day in the life of me when I was working on um, the television pilot. That's my most recent project. So I, the, so we'll start with the night before. The night before, I would prepare for the next day. So meaning like I'd make sure everyone had their call sheets. I'd make sure everyone was ready. Everyone answered my text messages or my phone calls. Phone calls are probably better than text messages. I'll just say, made sure everyone was ready and our set was ready and everything was good to go. Then what I would do is I would take some time and say, okay, I'm going to disconnect and I'm going to relax. <laughs> and so I would relax that night and try to go to bed early, get a lot of sleep. The next day, early morning, I'd be up super early morning, again, making sure everyone's ready to go. I would arrive on the set and I'd be there before anybody else was there. So I'd be there extremely early. Um, sometimes part of the crew would be there, but normally I would be one of the first people onto the set. So I'd arrive onto the set before the actors even get there. I'd get everything ready, make sure we have all the props in place, make sure everything's ready. I'd kind of look through our schedule and we have multiple scenes to shoot for the day. So I'd make sure we have everything together. Then what I would do is um, the actors would come in. I'd welcome everybody and be like, okay, we ready? You good? How are you feeling? Everything's good. Then what we would do is we would actually start filming. And that was my favorite part is the actual production and filming. And so I'd film. And then um, what we would do is we would take breaks. So we would have a lunch break or we'd have a quick break, like get a coffee, get some water, take a break. I, you kind of will, it's a lot of intuition as a director. So you kind of feel out your set and see if they kind of need a break. Um, and then at the very end of the day, like when everybody goes home and you're done, your job is not done. You're going to be going home and preparing for the next day. So that's usually how I prioritize is just like making sure everything is organized, welcoming everyone to set, getting the shots done, and then going home and doing it again. But also at the end of the day, taking time for yourself, you have to, you're going to get burnt out. So just try to do it. It's really hard because I'm kind of a workaholic when it comes to filming and I will work 24 seven, which is not healthy. So if you're a personality like me, be, uh, be careful of that. Amazing. Thank you so much, Michaela, for that. Yes, balance and organization and intuition, all of those things um, to be an amazing artist and writer and director and all that you do. So let, again, another virtual round of applause for Michaela. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge with us today. And uh, this is going to be on the recording. And um, yes, thank you so much. And thanks for um, everyone being here. We will see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.